In this video, we will discuss how to add behavior to your activities. An activity is defined in two files, an XML layout file for the UI and a C-sharp code file that implements the behavior. Your activity class needs to inherit from Android's activity base class. You have to add the activity attribute to your activity class. The activity attribute has several properties that affect how Android treats your activity. We'll see a few of them shortly. An application designates an activity as an entry point by setting main launcher equal to true on the activity attribute. Activities with main launcher equaling true appear on the Android launcher screen. When the user touches your activity's launcher icon, Android creates an instance of that activity. Android requires that every app include a manifest that must be named androidmanifest.xml. The manifest must be in the root of the app's directory structure. The build tools ensure the final manifest is placed in the correct folder within the APK file structure. The manifest provides Android with identity information such as a unique package name, branding information such as an app name and icon, the versions of Android your app will work with, and the Android services your app will need in order to run, such as the camera or phone dialer. The manifest tells Android which activity is your app's main activity. The main launcher property in the activity attribute creates these values in the manifest. When you set main launcher equal to true on your main activity, the build tools use this to add extra entries to that activity's information in the manifest when the app is compiled. Any information you specify in the Android manifest XML file directly will always supersede any attributes or definitions provided in code. In other words, if you set values in this file, they will always take precedence over anything provided by the compiler. These additional details tell Android that this is the app's main activity. This causes Android to list the activity on the device's launcher screen. You'll have to override activity.onCreate to do your initialization. Android calls this method after it instantiates your activity. Android requires that you call the base version of onCreate. You will get a runtime exception if you don't. This method takes the place of the constructor as the spot to consolidate all of your setup code. The build process auto-generates a resource layout class that contains an identifier for each of your layout files. UI layout files need to be manually loaded in your activity's c -sharp code file. This means you need some way to identify your layout file from code. Using the file and folder names is awkward, so Android provides a nice convenience. For each layout file, Android generates a field to identify it. There are many Android APIs that take this field as an argument. Passing this field is an easier way for you to identify the file than if you had to create a path or manually open the file. The name of the field matches the name of the layout file, but without the AXML extension. The field is nested inside two classes, so you need to prefix the field name with resource.layout to access it. You have to tell Android to instantiate the UI for your activity. You do this by calling setContentView and passing the identifying field for the layout file. Set content view does two things. Parses the XML and instantiates all the layouts and views inside it, and it displays the result to the user. The view class has an ID property that you can use to uniquely identify an instance. This isn't a field you must set. You set it only when you need to identify a specific view object. The main time this happens is when you need to access a view from code. You assign an ID value in the XML, and use the ID from code to get a reference to that view. Android chose int for the type of the ID which can be used, and this can be a bit confusing at first. In the XML, it will look like you're assigning a string. However, behind the scenes, Android replaces the string with an integer value. All the views and layouts you work with in your UI inherit from the view class, so they all have an ID property. In XML, you use the Android ID attribute to set the underlying ID property. You use the special syntax at followed by the ID to set the Android ID. This tells Android you want it to generate a new ID for you. Remember that the ID property has type int, while the value after the forward slash looks like a string. This string is used as the name of a generated field. The field has type int, and Android takes care of assigning a unique integer value to it. The integer value of the field is what really gets assigned to the view ID property. The activity find view by ID method takes an integer ID and searches the activity's UI for a view with that ID value. You pass it one of the resource ID fields and it returns a reference to that view. It returns null if it fails to find a view with the given ID. 
Once you have a reference, you can work with the view. For example, you could access the text property to retrieve user input from an edit text or subscribe to the click event of a button.